What's up guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about Sean O'Malley versus Aljamain Sterling. It just happened about seven, eight or nine hours ago and O'Malley is now the bantamweight champion and I hate to be the guy that said I told you so guys but I predicted round two KO with hammer fists and that's pretty much exactly what happened. O'Malley finished him on the ground with more or less hammer fists. There was a lot of hammer fists thrown and then um, yeah, all I have to say is I thought this was going to happen. I knew he'd stuff the takedowns. There was one takedown stuffed in the first round at the end of it. Um, and then Sean O'Malley had a very quiet first round. So I'm, I'm going to give my reaction to everything in the fight. Talk about what's next. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into this. Starting off with round one. Um, actually, let's just start before the fight, okay? Um, O'Malley's walkout was so cool. He walked out to the song Superstar. And I've got to say... That is the best walkout ever, okay? And I've seen a lot of UFC walkouts. The song was perfect for the vibe. Uh, the lights were cool. It was like light blue, which just really gave like a vibe of like, he's like kind of like the underdog in a way. And he came out. He looked pretty nervous. I'm not going to lie. He was like, he looked really quiet and a bit shelled. But then he, I think after a few minutes and after he'd walked out and he got his, um, <clears throat> the uh, the cutman had put the Vaseline on him. Um, he got, went up the steps. The chorus hit at the same time, and then he obviously celebrated in front of the crowd and he, like hyped him up to get ready for the fight. And honestly, that song literally fit O'Malley like to a T. Like the lyrics talking about you know being a superstar. The crowd's watching. The lights are on. Literally UFC two ninety two main event. What more could you want? Anyway, Aljo walked out. You know Bruce Buffer. The fight begins. And then the first one was pretty quiet. O'Malley literally didn't throw a strike for the first three minutes. I genuinely thought he'd injured himself. Like, I was a little bit worried that he'd injured himself. But then he threw a few front, front kicks and I realised he was fine. And um, I think he was just kind of getting his timings and his range down. And honestly, it kind of worked because I think it scared Aljamain a bit, I think. I think um, Aljamain was really like, why isn't he pressing me as much? But then when Sean went forwards in round one... Aljamain bought on it, like he was biting so hard on every feint, literally, or, or if O'Malley like moved his leg forwards, like Aljamain would like twitch his head, like he was worried about the head kick, if he moved his hands up, um, Aljamain would like duck his head, it was crazy, he'd move back, so he was really having a hard time pressuring him to try and get him to the cage, because that's where Aljamain Sterling does his best work, honestly, I don't think Aljamain's that good at, like, takedowns in the middle. I think he's better off the cage. We saw that in the Cejudo fight. Um, but, you know, Cejudo is very different from O'Malley in build. So, obviously, at the end of the first round, it ended up against the cage. Um, Sterling shot in. O'Malley pulled him up. Didn't He stuffed it completely, and he was completely fine. And then the round ended. So, round one, it was close, but it was 10-9 Sterling because he landed a few punches in the, in the um, mid, like, mid-single leg. So um yeah um Omar uh sorry Sterling won the first round then second round um a bit bit busier at the start um O'Malley throws a kick he slips he, but he manages to get up he gets up really quick but Sterling shoots in but he's managed to like kind of get up enough that he can stop the takedown uh used a bit of flexibility to uh, basically get his leg off Aljamain's hands and then Aljamain landed like one good shot on the break. And then um, basically they separated out. And then um, O'Malley kind of landed. He like O'Malley reset. He kind of landed a front kick, a front teep to the body. And then Sterling came rushing in. Just like I, I literally said that Sterling's bad on the feet. And everyone was like, nah, he's not that bad. But a lot of, pe a lot of people were not counting him out. But um, I was one of them. And I knew O'Malley was going to hurt him on the feet. I said he just needs to take the chance and make sure he gets the finish when he does hurt him. Sure enough, Sterling comes in like an idiot. Like, just literally head first. Like, Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes vibes. And immediately gets counter shot. Kind of McGregor Aldo-esque. Uh, both right hands. Um, puts him right down. He literally face plants the canvas. He rolls over and O'Malley lands some of the best ground and pound I've seen from that position. To stand up and hurt someone when they're you're literally using their legs to block you and still hit them like that is insane. And he got round the side and one of the hammer fists literally had Aljara. Like he landed it really, really clean. All his weight was on it. And that was when I, I knew Aljara was done then. It was like the seventh strike, the hammer fist, and he just got through perfectly, hit him clean on the jaw. And Aljo just kind of like looked away when it hit him. And um I knew that after that I knew O'Malley was getting the finish. And um, obviously then Mark Goddard just stepped in, Aljo rolls over, but he was completely done. 
People are saying that's an early stoppage. That is not an early stoppage. Um, Aljo literally was done. Um, he didn't even get up. The reason I know it was an early stoppage is because when the ref called it, he stayed on his knees, okay? If someone's fine, they'll just get straight back up to try and look cool and like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. But he stayed on his knees because he knew that if he was going to get up, he'd fall over because he was more wobbled than it looked. And um, his chin, like I said in my breakdown video, because obviously I predicted this, go and check that video out, I look like an absolute prophet. Um, if I said in that video, his chin's decent, but it's not like a god chin, you know what I mean? It won't like take an un, a crazy hit, but he won't get slumped by something he shouldn't get slumped by. But that that shot would knock out 90% of Bantamweights. But anyway, Sean O'Malley is now the Bantamweight champion. What a performance. Um... I mean, he only threw, like, he only landed, like, nine strikes, so... And then, obviously, the hammer fist after, so that's, like, another ten, but crazy, crazy win. I predicted it. Second round TKO, I called it with hammer fist, so called really well. The only thing I didn't call properly, I said it would come from an overhand right. It wasn't an overhand right, it was a count. It was a counter, um, counter hook right, and, um, you know, I was close, still a right hand, but, obviously, I thought O'Malley would maybe do it going a little bit forward, but still good. Like I said, O'Malley's so good going backwards. People just don't forget. Um, that's just why he's so dangerous. I think a lot of grapplers will struggle with him because, you know, when you're put, putting a striker in the back foot, normally they're not used to being on the back foot. They're used to setting the pace and the pressure. And then um, when you're putting a striker on the back foot like that, um, normally they panic. But O'Malley, he literally prefers... I actually think he fights better walking backwards, which is crazy. But um, it just seems to suit his style more. And um, he called out Cheeto Vera in his speech. Um, I would like to see that. I think it's good. It will sell well. Um, casual fans will love it because obviously they'll see they'll know that Cheeto has a win over O'Malley, however controversial it may be. And obviously O'Malley wants it because it means that if he wins that, he has then avenged his only loss. So um, he's gonna want that. He's probably gonna want to get finished because Cheeto Vera, as far as I'm aware, I don't think he's ever been KO'd in his career. Excuse me. And um, I think he will win that regardless of how many rounds well it will be a five round fight because it's a title fight but i do think he'll win that i think he said october i think he said october in msg so you know let's make that let's book that i don't really want to see sandhagen versus sugar um i don't feel like sandhagen earned it with that boring thing because i feel like he'd probably just try and do that to sean to get the belt and then he'll be like sorry guys but i really wanted to be champion like you know we don't want champions like that we want champions like sugar you know what i mean because, like, that sells, and it's fun to watch, so why wouldn't you, and, um, yeah, uh, the Marab fight is also an option, I don't think they're going to do it, though, I think they're probably going to have Marab and Corey fight for the next title fight, ideally, Marab, ideally, Marab probably loses to Sanhagen, because Marab, in my opinion, is probably Sugar's toughest matchup, however, he could do that to Marab, you know, like, because Marab loves to pressure, but Sugar, Sugar doesn't mind getting pressured. He's actually better on his back feet, feet. And obviously there's knees up the middle. And I just feel going backwards, Sugar so much more lethal than Peter Yan. So obviously a lot of people will be picking Marab in that fight. But I feel like I might just pick... In fact, I think I'm going to pick, pick Sugar against everyone, okay? Because I picked him to win this. He was a big underdog. So he's, you know, he proved everyone wrong. A lot of big MMA guys were... Lucas Tracy picked... Um, Aljamain to win, MMA Guru picked him to win, in fact, the only few people, obviously there was a few people in the comments, so shout out to them, anyone who picked O'Malley with me, well done, and then um, Dan Hardy picked O'Malley to win, which is quite funny, out of all people, Dan Hardy got it right, and, um, you know, amazing performance by O'Malley, um, he is undoubtedly a superstar now, he's probably top five biggest draws in the UFC now, he's, uh, I'd say he's probably a little bit below Adesanya level now, but, I was seen on social media, like, people that I know that don't even, like, care about the UFC were reposting stuff to do with him, and they were like, wow, this is so cool. So he's really gone mainstream with that. Um, it got one and a half million views on YouTube. They published the, f the full second round. They've never done that before. Um, they published the full second round on YouTube officially, and it has, like, one, like nearly two million views in, like, literally 14 hours, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so, yeah, well done. A, new, a star is born, quite literally, a superstar, as his walkout suggested, and um, amazing card, good card, it was the only finish on the card, I find that hilarious, the only finish on the card 
was O'Malley, and he was the big... I think he was the biggest underdog. If not, he was the second biggest. Uh, actually, I think Neil Magny might have been a bigger, bigger underdog. But um, O'Malley, the only finish on the card, you couldn't make it up. He is the new, the, he is the new UFC superstar. I've always loved him. I remember... Um, I've just, you know... I've I've always been a big fan of O'Malley. I I remember watching O'Malley when he was in the Contender series. That was his first fight I watched. Um, I was really young then, and something about him because you know I was just um I was just a young kid, and he was really young at that time, and he was really skinny. So was I, and I just thought, wow, like this skinny guy, you know, he's out here destroying guys that are you know look like traditionally what you think a fighter would look like, and he's proving them wrong. And it really made me just think like, wow, this guy's so talented. You know what I mean? And um, he is. This guy's genuine. He's legit. Um, people forget just because he's got curly hair and stuff and coloured hair. Um, they just think it like... I saw some guy comment he's like a product of the media. He isn't a product of the media, okay? This guy is legit. And um, yeah, he's amazing. Sean O'Malley will be a very rich person in the future. I can imagine he's going to have a very successful career ahead of him. And um, yeah, highlight of the day... A lot of comments told me I was an idiot and I was getting my picks wrong, so I'm, I'm gonna put one on the screen. Just we'll put it we'll put it here. Yeah, we'll put it here. Hopefully you can see that on the screen right now. I'll put that on for you. Um, this guy was in, you know, he didn't really think O'Malley was gonna win, but um, he deleted his comment, but I saved it. So you know, enjoy that, L dude. That's what happens when you comment stuff like that. But um, uh, yeah, I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Great card. I'm gonna have another video out today, so don't miss that. And um, yeah, that's just my reaction to the main event. Uh, great card, I loved it. Even though there was only one finish, this was one of the best cards in a while. I've been going off the UFC recently. There was a lot of poor robberies on this card uh, earlier down it. And um, yeah, really glad uh, the main event ended like that. What a way to go out. And we have a new superstar in town, Sean O'Malley. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Leave a like, comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.